Rich, what's kind of the schedule this week for the team? The schedule this week is we're going to practice at 11 o'clock today and tomorrow. We're going to get on the airplane about 3 o'clock. We'll have a practice at uh, Creighton at uh, about 11.45 on Friday. We'll, uh, excuse me, Thursday, sorry. Uh, we'll lift afterwards, and then we've got the 50-minute uh, slot of BP at uh, TD Ameritrade on Friday. Has it sunk in for you yet? Have you, have you kind of allowed this, allowed yourself to enjoy this a little bit yet, or is there still too much left to do? Well, I think we're enjoying it, uh, you know, as much as you're supposed to. You know, there's a, there's a cap on that. Uh, but we'll get to practice today, and uh, we'll make sure that our mindset is where it needs to be as we, as we uh, move on with the week. What was that trip home like for the guy? Was it a lot of sleeping, or is it still a lot of excitement? It was pretty quiet, but uh, the kids are excited. And, uh, the best bus ride was from uh, 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 the field to the hotel, you know, after the ball game. That was a good 25 minutes. The kids are uh, fired up, and so was the coaching staff. You didn't have a chance to look at Washington yet. No. I will. Do you know their, their coach, their system up there? I know Lindsey well, mm -hmm. sure. A lot of respect for the Huskies and Lindsey. And, uh, they'll be a well-coached team with a lot of really good players. Mississippi State has some experience for West Coast baseball, and, of course, you've been out there in your career as well. I mean, if you had to summarize any general differences between how they pitch or play it, are there anything that jumps out to you? Oh, I, I couldn't go there yet. Um, you know, I, I think 20, 25 years ago, it was big ball out here in the SEC and small ball on the West Coast. I think there's a, a tremendous amount of familiarity uh, at this point. There's uh, there's no secrets. Everybody's on TV. You can get to know you know who you're playing pretty quick uh, with just a little bit of uh, investment of time. Um, but but I, I wouldn't characterize them as being dramatically different than a good team in any league. You got a few guys you can plug in at, at DH. You cycled a couple through in Tallahassee, <clears throat> going with Westburg, all three, and, and, a, and a Nashville. Is that kind of a feel decision for you? How, how do you kind of make those DH? Decisions? In terms of who's going to be who's our DH, DH? Yes. well, I just feel like at this point, uh, you know, that stuff changes all the time. But at this point, we're pretty comfortable with Jordan uh, in that spot. He didn't there for a while. He had this, uh, the strained hamstring, which appears to be back to. Uh, being in good shape, but uh, you, you look at the matchup, you look at who's hot, you look at what you think the game might uh, ask you to do, and then you try to make the best decision you can like you do at every other spot. I don't think Marshall played at all in Nashville, if I remember right. Is he healthy? Is yep, he everybody's, as far as I know, I think we're in good shape health-wise. With the rest factor now relatively equal between Connor and Ethan, when do you expect to make a decision on how, the, how you'll line it up? Well, I'll talk to those guys today. You know, I, I don't like to tell you what I'm going to do until I know what I'm going to do. You know, and not not to be cute with an answer or anything, but I think it, it makes sense to, you know, talk to them and, um, you know, avoid having to change or, you know, what you're doing for whatever reason. But I'll talk to them today and see how they feel, and, and then we'll make a good decision. You guys, uh, you know, playing these close games like this and winning in dramatic fashion, that might take it out of a lot of teams. Your guys seem to thrive on that. Um, is that say something about the makeup of the team, or what is that? Well, I think it, it does. I think being in our league, you know, you look around, there's a lot of close games in our league. I think our league, our league is a great, uh, a great way to prepare for the postseason. You know, I think uh, uh, if we didn't have three of them matched up in uh, Super Regionals, you might have a few more uh, making the trip to Omaha. But uh, uh, I think the league does a great job of preparing you to play tight games in, in, uh, in, in the postseason and being on the big stage. That's the beauty of being in our league, boy. When did you become aware of the rally banana? And what did you think of it when you first saw it kind of catching on? <laughs> Coach Henderson's opinion of the rally banana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad that the kids are having a good time. I want them to be loose. I want them to be confident. I want them to play on the edge. Uh, I want them to like being in the dugout. All of those things come into play. I, I don't remember the exact moment that I learned of the value and the importance of the rally <laughs> banana. Um, I, I, I guess we're attributing it to Jordan Westberg at this point. Uh, I guess those are my thoughts on the rally. <laughs> uh, you know, our fans have adopted it and they love it, and so I'm all for it. Uh, is there a certain point where there could be too many bananas in the dugout? 
dugout. Well, I think it's really the quality of the banana as opposed to the, you know, the number of them. But uh, no, I think it's like anything. And we'll have practice today, and I will address those. I'm not going to address the banana, but uh, I, I will address, you know, where your thoughts should be, uh, where they should be, why they should be there, uh, what allows you to be successful over uh, over a period of time or in any given situation. Well, I'll address all of that with those kids, and they'll know exactly what I think and why. Do you like bananas? I like bananas. <laughs> yeah, like, but but you know, I think more importantly is the kids need to understand that that, that there's a balance to be found. You know, in, in life and in all areas, there's a there's a balance to be found, and we'll find it. And we'll the, the, our kids will handle that well. You mentioned the balance, and, and at the end of a long season, especially with the pressures a team has, can something like that, whether it's a banana or any kind of gimmick, can that help keep that balance you're looking for? Where pressure you're talking about alleviate and manage stress mm -hmm. within for your kids, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, and, and engage your fan base and give them something to focus on. Uh, you know, the, any kid that's heard me or been with me uh, in our programs, wherever I've been for the last 20, 25 years, has heard, man, if something's funny, you laugh. Mm -hmm. that, that's, you know, that's a staple of whatever program I'm involved in. And that, that, that just speaks to the fact that you've got to be able to have a sense of humor if, you're, if you play baseball and you're in the dugout. You have to. Um, and while the banana may not be directly uh, – or may not directly impact humor, it, it speaks to the fact that you want your kids loose and, and you want them enjoying the environment. As a player and a coach yourself in your early years, did you ever do anything crazy or stupid like that? Sure. Absolutely. You care to share? No. <laughs> 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 but uh, but uh, that just goes, you know, I was a pitcher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so you, you pitch and you get some days off and that's kind of what you do. And uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the, we enough next question <laughs> <laughs> i feel like sometimes you have to kind of tell the guys to remember to soak in the moment but it seems like jake mangum is not having that problem he seems to be soaking up every single bit of this can you just tell me what he means to this team and you know what this run might mean to him <clears throat> is jake here today he is okay well, well let, let's good. the second part let's direct uh, to jake but jake's uh, uh as i've said many times a really important factor we've got a lot of guys that are a big part of our team he's one of them uh, nobody's bigger than the team, and, and nobody understands that more than Jake Mangum. I mean, he's all about the team. He's all about Mississippi State. Uh, when I took over, I told him what I was going to need from him and why. He got it. He understood immediately. He's been awesome. He's a great teammate. He's a really good player. Uh, it's an honor to coach him. And... You know, I just have a lot of respect for him and, and how he goes about this, and he loves Mississippi State. What was it you asked him? Well, I just told him what we're going to need. Yeah. You know, <laughs> basic. You know, we're going to need leadership. We're going to need communication. Uh, you know, all, th th those types of things. And I need you to play hard, and I need you to uh, – when I ask you to do something, I need you to do it. And, and I didn't deliver it in any other way than just uh, very open. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, it was a very, very easy conversation. And, uh, and don't read too much into it. Right. You know, it's kind of the conversation you have with kids all the time. You know, very, very basic, very direct. What are your thoughts about the rally banana? The rally banana, I think it's special. Uh, you know, every year has their thing, a quirk, something that gets you going, and what Jordan did and how he's uh, handled this and going <coughs> into something fun. And it keeps us loose, it keeps us excited, uh, a reason to laugh in the dugout when times we get tense. How did it start, Alex? I don't really know. I was um, I was pitching when it started, and apparently Jordan was hungry, so he got a banana. Uh, and then he had another one. He started playing with it, messing around, doing a radar gun, put sunscreen on it, and bug spray at one point. Uh, I think last game it was at the spa, so it had a towel and was able to relax the whole game. So uh, he just kind of used it for a lot of things and kept it funny and kept it loose. You've had a heck of a run in Tallahassee, and then in Nashville, is that attributed to the banana's birth? I guess. You said I guess. When you were yeah. Out. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could you could say that. Uh, I guess more of a tribute to the team and how they've played behind me and you know the run support and everything else. But yeah, the banana has its part in that too. Have you felt different out there? I mean. You, Look, no, look really well the last couple of I think especially. things are just starting to starting to click. Um, you know, ball's starting to bounce our way. It's just one of those things where that's how baseball goes. Sometimes it has its ups and downs, and if you just stay stay strong through the valleys, usually you'll come back up. 
with the What's banana thing real quick. Is that something you expected to catch on with the fans and become this sort of phenomenon? Not as not as much as it has. Uh, the fans have really taken it to a new level, and it's funny to watch. Uh, it's cool for Jordan. You know, he, he started something that really you don't expect to get that big, and now how it's taken off, it's really cool and special for this team. Do you perceive bananas in a different way now? Um, take them a little more seriously when you eat them. You, know, you realize the importance every time you get them now. Might become rare in the stores around here. <laughs> you talk about being seriously. I mean, your guy the last several years have so kind of had a reputation for unseriousness in the dugout, and now this year it's almost like all business with you. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, yeah, sometimes. I still like to try to keep it loose. Uh, still like to you know have fun. It's baseball. I mean, that's why we're here. We we're here to have fun. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's cool though to see Jordan kind of relax in that persona as a freshman and he's able to to be so loose and feel so confident and it's cool to see that you don't mind handing off to him the burden of being the guy to come with things oh, no. all your 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 hip no. and, and he, he just uh he might uh he might take it over better than i ever did uh way, the way he's done it and um the fun we've had with it he's he's doing much better than i ever could back to your pitching i mean how do you know when you're on when you know you've got that ball sinking like you need to uh they're not hitting it as good mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know what else. Sometimes they hit it, sometimes they don't. So I guess when, when they're not hitting it as good, it feels a lot better. What is it about these guys, or at least yourself, Riley, and others, that you'll go one game where people are hitting what you throw, the next game you're just shutting them lights out? That's, that's just baseball. Um, obviously, we still have, we have a ton of confidence in Riley. We have a ton of confidence in anybody. We roll out of the bullpen right now. Um, I think just about everybody got big outs, and if they weren't put in the game, we know they can't get big outs. Uh, so that allows some, like it allows me to loosen up because I know if it's not my day, someone else is going to be able to pick up the ball and, and carry the team for us. Um, it's really it's really nice having guys behind you and guys in front of you who really set the tone and, and allow the pressure to come off you. When a guy like Jake is saying you're the MVP of the of the game of the night, when Coach Henderson says the biggest moment of the game was the strikeout you got, and you hear about that second hand, what does it feel like? It feels good. Um, it's really nice thing to say, but you know there's so much more that happened in that game. Um, that was more. That's the best team. Three, two wins I've ever seen. You know, three games. Even though that Saturday game didn't go our way, um, that the team pulled through on that one. That's. There, I don't think there was one. We had a lot of great individual performances, but uh, overall, I think the team is really who deserve all that credit for those games. After getting so close to Omaha the last two years, what's it feel like to finally get over that hump and uh, make it? Is it sunk in yet? Uh, no, I, I don't think you could describe it. Um, the the feelings, the emotions that kind of came over us after that, uh, you know, so close. You have the heartbreak. You have teams that you just see be gone, seniors leave. Um, so it's just special to be able to get there and um, experience it. We're going to soak it all in, but we're still there to win. We're still there to play. So uh, we're going to try to keep our emotions in check, but we're pretty excited. Is this the role you foresaw yourself this season? Because everybody, every pitcher goes in thinking, I'm going to be get out there and be a starter. I'm going to have a certain type of role. But how did you see your year developing? Um, I really, I really didn't. I don't know. I just kind of, um, I figured wherever he put me, that's where I would go, and, and I would try to do my best to become. I haven't pitched since since high school, right? So uh, nothing really was set in stone for me. I, I didn't really feel a draw towards any specific role. Um, any way that the team needed me to do, I was just ready to do it. Have you embraced it? Oh yeah, I'll, uh, I'll embrace any time I get a chance to go pitch. So. What, what is it about fun about being told, okay, get down there, warm up? It's an adrenaline rush. Uh, you know, your heart starts beating a little bit, and you're ready, the funnest part is trying to slow it down and get ready to go in. Is you know, it's it's going to be a big situation, or you're going to come in your starter. We have three great starters who've thrown so far, and they're going to give you best thing they got and they're going to keep the game close so you know it's your job to keep it there and give a chance the team a chance to win. You have one game though where you threw as many pitchers as a starter down in Tallahassee. I mean yeah. just, and yet you were able to come back up several days later and throw effectively again. Yeah um, yeah I felt that one that was a that's the most pitches I've thrown in a long time but uh, you know it gets to this point in the season you don't really notice it you don't feel it um, any chance you can to get back out there you're gonna you're gonna do it so uh, pitchers I think are irrelevant to me at this point it's just be, get a chance to get back out on the mound. Kind of on that subject, what is your process in between outings since now you're able to string two, three good outings in a row now? Uh, you know, something's getting in the weight room, Coach Neal, trying to loosen up the body. Uh, other than that is keep staying in the same routine, uh, tossing, throwing, 
stretching, all that stuff, it just kind of all just comes into fruition after that. So it's it's pretty just the same routine. Again, you're going to Omaha, that's the place y'all have tried through, through all through the Super Regionals before. Now you've done it. How long does it take to come down from the high and approach it again as we got ball to play? Uh, when we got back from Starville, it, it, it was kind of uh, – Oh, it kind of sunk in when we saw all the fans waiting on us. It was uh, it was really cool. But um, you know, like I said, it's um, we're five wins away from the national championship, so we're not going to take that lightly. And um, you know, the school deserves its first national championship. We hope to do to get it done. You said in the preseason you couldn't leave here with an 0-4 record in Super Regionals. Now that you've kind of gotten some of that back, how's it feel? Uh, it feels really good. Um, you know, after that first one Friday night, we were like. Literally, we were just celebrating a super regional win, and um, you know Vanderbilt came out the next day in the fall. And the, the whole entire weekend was an accurate picture of our season. Like it was just a lot of ups, a lot of downs, just so back and forth, and it was um, it was really really cool to see how all the guys just didn't really take no for an answer. And uh, you know when we blew a lead in the ninth, we didn't give up, took in the eleventh. What's the last week been like for you? you? You basically, you know, say you're coming back for your senior year and things, and you kind of get that stress over with, and you get to go to Omaha and things. It's got to rank up there in, in weeks of your life, I would suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I told some of the freshmen after we won the Super Regional, I was, uh, you know, don't take this for granted. Like, you're not supposed to be in this situation. It's really hard to get to this situation. And, um, you know, like we've been to three straight Super Regionals, but not, like, there's not many teams that can say that. And now that we finally get through at Omaha, they, everyone needs to just take this in and, and make the most of it because, you know, it's, it's really hard to get to this situation. Going off the freshmen, you know, guys like Tanner and Dustin, and guys like that, you were in a Super Regional as a freshman. How much of – have you seen them grow maybe like a learning experience out of this going to Omaha? You know, obviously most freshmen – don't go through the ups and downs of a postseason as a freshman, but for you going through it as well, have you seen it kind of wear off on them? I have. Uh, I mean, the, those these underclassmen are going to be really, really good here, and I think y'all can see that as, fresh, as freshmen already. And um, you know, it's it's really cool to see those guys grow throughout the season, and uh, I really can't wait to see what they can do here. And uh, I, I know they're going to Omaha in their first year, but you know, it's it's going to be cool to see that what, what what legacy they leave. Are you a little jealous they're getting it the first year? Oh, no, not at all. I'm glad, just glad to be a part of it. And, um, you know, going 0 4 in two years in Super Regional is really hard. Being that close so long and finally just having a crazy Super Regional getting there. Y'all had such a great record on the home field against the best teams. But what does it mean now to go to places like Florida State, go to Vanderbilt, and beat elite teams on their own field and set you up now for a neutral field? I mean, I feel like Omaha is going to be a home game. And to be honest with you, Nashville was almost a home game. I, I really think at least one of those games we had more fans than Vanderbilt did. And, and that's really hard to believe, especially in a stadium that sits like 3,500 fans. You know, and our fans have been with us all year. Uh, I, I know early on we didn't give them much to root for, but they stuck with us, and now we get to go to Omaha. And, and I know Omaha is going to be painted maroon. It always is when the dogs are there. Did you watch the 2013 series? I did, I did. Um, I remember the UCLA series very vividly. Yeah. And uh, I remember Hunter Renfro's bomb. And was like, I mean, growing up as a kid, you, you, you wake up and you watch Omaha all day. Like, that's just what you do. And uh, it's awesome that you can live it now. It's a great big field out there, but y'all have proven you can win in a small field, Tallahassee. You can win in a big field on your home. You can win in a kind of a neutral field to Vanderbilt. Y'all just seem to be able to adjust now here in the late season to wherever you play. Oh, we just stick to our approach. I mean, our, our approach works on small fields, big fields, medium fields. Uh, we got a good outfield core and uh, a lot of guys that can go track it down. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a good fit for us. Jay, I think you've tweeted twice the same scene from Major League message, you know, nothing left to do but win the whole thing. I mean, is that kind of the attitude that you think this team's adopted? Oh, I mean, we just form an identity, you know, right. like that, that board right there tells you everything you need to know uh, on February or Tuesday morning at 7.15 in the morning. You know, uh, season kind of changed a lot how you expected it to, and uh, Coach Henderson gave us an identity, and, and we ran with it, and now we're five ones away from the national championship. Were you surprised that Vanderbilt tried to send the runner to third base on you? Second time, yes. Yeah. First time, no. Um, you know, um, 
it, it was just, it was such, it, everything was happening so fast mm -hmm. that weekend. You just had to slow everything down, and uh, a lot of our guys were able to do that. As good as the throw was, were you really proud of what Justin did to get in the ball, it receiving tag. it, to get the tag down? A really good tag. Uh, Foskey's done an amazing job at their base uh, since Westy's uh, you know, hamstring or, uh, ordeal. But, yeah, freshmen have been stepping up for us, and upperclassmen have too. It's been taking a team effort. So, How satisfying to see you uh, struggle with the bat like Alexander? He had some big hits, but consistency has been there. But he comes through in a game like that and, and with Tallahassee and Vanderbilt. L.A. has been... He's been hitting whatever his average is. He's hitting really hard, whatever the number is. He he's hit the ball really hard at people all year. I mean, he hasn't had much, you know, to show for it. But the LA is gonna be the type of guy that no matter what he's hitting this week, he's gonna get all on. He's, he's gonna get us a big hit. He's gonna he's gonna do what it takes for us to win. When did you notice the rally? After the whatever game it was, it was uh, the Oklahoma game, that night game. Yeah. It, after that game, I was like, what is going on right now? Westburg started something. And it, it, a lot of people ran with it. <laughs> How many bananas? Were there, are there more bananas like in the dugout now than there were? What would you say, Pipe? Probably. There's a lot. Yeah, real fake. You name it. We just got a lot of, a lot of bananas. <laughs> I mean, see t-shirts now. Yeah. Yeah, like not even a week after, there's t-shirts everywhere in, in the super region. Crazy. When do, you, do you, how many bananas do you expect to see in Omaha? Oh gosh. There's gonna be yeah, there's gonna be so many inflatable bananas flying around. It's gonna be insane. But uh, like we're gonna need everybody out there. I mean, if if you can get out to Omaha, be there, help us out. We're gonna need every single bit of room we can have there to help us get there. Um, this team can do it. Absolutely can do it. I mean, five wins is not much at all, considering how long a season is. And uh, it, it should be fun. We need everybody out there. I mean that. Uh, you, know, you guys have made some West Coast road trips. Do you see any kind of, you know, is there really any difference compared to like Pac-12 in terms of SEC, in terms of pitching or anything like that? There's different tendencies in, in different conferences, but look, if you can make it out of the SEC, you're going to be all right. Uh, you know, there's going to be some really good teams from other conferences there, obviously. I mean, they're in Omaha. But um, if the SEC will, if you're not ready for it, it will, it will destroy you. And... Uh, if you can make it out of it, you, you can take on anything. I mean, that. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I, mine's kind of random, but it, Father's Day is coming up and things. And I've heard you mention your dad quite quite a bit uh, over the last, since you've been here, really. How much has he played into your development and where you're at right now? And, everything. And, uh, everything. I, I wouldn't be playing college baseball for him. For him. Uh, and, uh, and he dragged me out to the baseball field on days I didn't want to go out there. Uh, you know, he, he's been a huge part of my life. He's kind of raised me how I needed to be raised. He's pushed me all the time. He's showed me how to do things the right way. And he's mentally showed me how to take on, you know, baseball. Because it's a game of failure. And if you're not mentally ready for it, it, it it'll eat you up. And um, he taught me how to do things. One more. Um, with the banana thing, I mean, obviously I've seen Jordan put it on his head and his belt loops. How else are they used as a motivational device? Uh, I don't know. That's just Westburg rolling with it. Uh, you know, I've seen it all over the place. Uh, if it's, it's only weird if it doesn't work, you know.